everyone, and uh, thank you so much for coming out to see a man who makes cat puns for a living uh, talk about an emerging technology and the problems with it. Uh, just to give a little context about why I am here talking about this, uh, Crypto Kitties is a game centered around breedable, collectible, and oh-so-adorable cats we call Crypto Kitties. Each cat is one of a kind, 100% owned by you, can't be replicated, taken away, destroyed, all these other things that the blockchain is supposed to empower. Most people know us for unintentionally melting the Ethereum network for a week, uh, and for developing a use case in blockchain outside of cryptocurrency. Uh, since numbers are often confused for credibility, you should know that we have made $24 million in sales on our platform, uh, around 800,000 kitties have been created, and we've introduced hundreds of thousands of people to blockchain technology. Uh, just a quick show of hands. Who actually knows what blockchain is and what it can do? That's more than I was expecting. Um, so that's fair. Don't worry about it. Technically, a blockchain is a linked line of blocks, and a block is a group of ordered transactions. But colloquially, it's a kind of database that can do some cool stuff. Data can't conflict with other data, which is to say it's consistent. It's immutable. You can only append to it. It's ownable, which means it's tied to its owner. Uh, the state of the data is agreed upon. There's a mutually understood truth. And no one person determines what's canon, which is to say it's decentralized. Uh, that's a lot of very impressive sounding words, but what it basically amounts to is that blockchain allows two people to trade value with no one in the middle. And that's really cool, but that does actually highlight one of the first problems I see in blockchain, and that is that the vast majority of people cannot articulate why it matters. Uh, my team and I launched CryptoKitties, the product, and the way we did because we saw problems in blockchain we wanted to address and because we believe in the potential of blockchain technology, but we believe that, block that that potential is being very narrowly defined, especially by cryptocurrency, which, to be clear, is pretty amazing in and of itself, but it's, it's really just a sliver of the picture. So when I ask people why blockchain matters, they kind of default to trying to explain what it is. Um, and understanding how something works is, is well and good, uh, but it's not the whole picture, nor is it necessary to understand its value. Uh, for example, fire. Um, fire is the rapid oxidation of a material in an exothermic process, and it's a lot of smoke and a lot of heat and, and all these other things about O2 bonds and, and things to that effect. But when you ask someone why fire matters, you do not explain it this way because that is not really a compelling way to understand its value. And Perhaps more importantly, you wouldn't talk about why, you wouldn't introduce somebody to fire without talking about its problems. And, and let's be clear, there are some pretty serious problems with fire. Problems that we've managed to mitigate and mostly address uh, since being introduced to it. Um, but I think with any emerging tool or technology that's supposed to make our lives better, you gotta take the good with the bad and you gotta acknowledge the bad so you can address the bad. So let's go back to that first problem. Why does blockchain matter? Unless there's a clear answer to this uh, that makes sense to your everyday user, uh, blockchain will never see widespread adoption. That, in my mind, is a huge problem. The technology will not realize its potential unless it's universally adopted in some way, shape, or form. For a technology to matter, it needs to be useful. For something to be useful, it needs to be used. It's, it's not really rocket science, which is why a guy who makes cat puns for a living is up here on stage. Um, for people to use something, though, you need to convince them it's, it's easier than their current solution, novel enough to overcome the barrier to entry, uh, or provide enough value to pay whatever the admission fee is. So the big issue right now, few people can tell you why it matters, fewer people can show you why, and almost next to no one is actually letting you experience why. Which brings me to the next big problem I see, the problem of stability and the need to meet expectations. And this is kind of a timely conversation because how blockchain's success and value is being communicated to a lot of people is, uh, well, about eight years ago this week, a man named Laszlo bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. Uh, eight years later, Laszlo probably regrets that decision because they're worth about $82 million right now. To most people, this is all they really know about blockchain, that two pizzas somehow turned into $82 million. Um, and that is a huge part of the popular fascination with blockchain, is derived from their massive value appreciation. And to be clear, 
this appreciation is earned. The, the promise to transform existing financial structures and a variety of other industries and use cases is incredibly powerful and a very real possibility. But the vast majority of, of crypto holders care more about price movements than, than the technological use cases or, or the practical applications. And what's more, this, this appreciation and, and the massive speculation it has bred is, is directly undermining the ability of these use cases to materialize and, and gain adoption. So simply put, we got a big obstacle in front of us. Blockchain has an immense amount of potential, but little in the way of proof. And when you have something with limitless potential, you have something with limitless potential problems. And the only way you are ever going to actively address those problems is to start to prove the potential. And that is a very good thing to do, is to start to run into these problems. I'm going to be using the Ethereum network in a lot of examples I have coming up, and that might make it seem like I'm critical of it, but it's actually a, a compliment to the network because they've done so much to push this, push this technology forward and tap into the potential of what it's capable of. Plus, I only talk about what I know. My game is on the Ethereum network, so I'm only going to be speaking to what I know, which is not a problem I'm going to be talking about, but let's not let the blind lead the blind. I will tell you what I know and little else. So the next Bitcoin uh, is an incredibly common headline. It makes sense. Uh, Bitcoin kicked off the blockchain revolution. It's, it's the, the closest thing that we have to proof right now. And, and that little bit of proof is, is pretty much how we are marking, how we are measuring success. What is the next Bitcoin? What's its value appreciation? How many pizzas is it worth? Um, we, we measure what we don't know by what little we understand of it. And right now, Bitcoin is kind of the only aspect of us, uh, a lot of us see when it comes to blockchain. Uh, but this does underline an opportunity that Bitcoin has communicated. Once you deliver something that matters, and I think at this point, eight years later, Bitcoin has proven it does matter, uh, trust and understanding and loyalty follow. And this isn't just brand loyalty I'm talking about, though it's a great incentive to be the first person to launch something. Uh, it, it's planting the flag in the ground and showing people it's possible to go here. Uh, we can't just point to the horizon, say how wonderful it is over there, and expect it to just happen. We need to lead people there. We need to prove it's possible. Because once you have any form of success in blockchain, you're going to have people imitating that success. It's going to have copycats. Apologies for the pun. And it's not necessarily a bad thing for that to happen. The best way to learn is to imitate. And once you imitate, you improve on the original idea. Once you improve on the original idea, you can actually innovate. One of the core challenges with CryptoKitties, the thing that I struggle with every day for people to overcome, is that it's not a cryptocurrency because that is most people's complete understanding of blockchain and what it does. Again, expectations are informed by understanding and understanding is informed by what people see, what people are told, and what people experience. And most of us are just being told things right now. Um, so let's not just confuse success with pizzas being worth a, a small country's GDP. Um, if we actually want it to be used and understood, and if we want it to reach its potential, we need to show its promise beyond Bitcoin. Which brings me to the next problem, and, and that's the problem of computation and, and the need we have for creativity in this industry. Um, blockchain's focus on, on value transfer is very understandable. Again, everything I've said about Bitcoin up to this point. But while the history, and, and frankly, most of the present uh, might be speculative and, and more about transferring value tokens back and forth, uh, the future can be very much richer than that. When, when Ethereum arrived, it introduced something called smart contracts, uh, which is decentralized computation. Collectively, billions of dollars have been poured into these products and their potential. Um, and, and that's really cool. And, and these things have the, the power to disrupt some of the largest industries in the world, all by executing code on the world's supercomputer. But the world's supercomputer is, well, before I get there, centralized solutions are still a lot easier for most people. I forgot the order of my slides, if you're curious what that little misstep was. Um, centralized solutions are convenient. They're faster, they're familiar, they're entrenched. If you could have money now, or if you could have money 20 to 30 minutes from now, you're probably going to take the former over the latter, unless you understand the value of waiting. Um, and, and, and the world computer is slow and expensive right now. It has less computation power than a smartwatch, uh, with your MacBook clocking in at about 3,000 times its speed. 
Uh, to be clear, these are different systems. This is a bit of a gross oversimplification. Well, not gross, but it's an oversimplification. But these orders of magnitude matter, um, especially when it comes to cost. Uh, the, compared to Amazon Web Services, it's about 150 million times more expensive. But that shows the incredible value people are placing on trustless computation and the room we have for improvement. Um, so in terms of utility, blockchain really does offer this meaningful value. It offers security. It offers transparency. It offers power, power for consumers, power for users, power that is decentralized, which is one of those many wonderful promises. The majority of tokens being speculated on represent a future product almost all intended to be powered by some significant smart contract functionality. 70% of Ethereum's congestion is due to these smart contracts, and that number is only going up, which just underlines the need for more computation at some point. Right now, the best idea is to balance the ideal user experience with the ideal value proposition. This is what we do with CryptoKitties, if you're at all curious. Um, decentralization absolutely empowers the most meaningful applications of blockchain technology, um, but not everything necessarily needs to be decentralized. It has severe scaling and user experience limitations if it's embraced needlessly, holistically. Um, activities should only be decentralized if they serve the user, they're crucial to the product's function, they're valuable, and they empower the principles behind your product. Which does bring us to the next issue, which is obsolescence. Um, improvements in, in blockchain are needlessly fragmented. Uh, the funding mechanisms in place, mainly ICOs, are incredibly powerful, but they're also disincentivizing people from staying on the same network. Ethereum has experienced many project spin-offs that have been, could have been implemented on-chain, but were more favorably funded as independent chains. Uh, Raiden's a great example of this. Uh, it, it was a prominent scaling initiative. Uh, they decided there wasn't enough funding, so they decided to do an ICO. They raised just over $32 million. Uh, the community saw it as a cash grab. And, and examples like this and things like forking, they just increase the complexity and barrier to entry in blockchain. And, and I understand that is the current state of things, but that doesn't always need to be the state of things. So this does bring us to our next major obstacle, which is that development is very slow, it is very difficult, and it is very unforgiving. All the things that make blockchain incredibly valuable and incredibly powerful also make it incredibly difficult to develop for. You do not get to make mistakes. You do not get to move fast and break things. You need to move slowly, you need to move thoughtfully, and you need to move gracefully. Um, and, and developers need a long-term way to be rewarded for improvements they make to the network. The Ethereum network just started a grant program uh, to ensure that important initiatives are addressed. Well, not just. That's been around for a while. Um, anyways, this is all to say, something we found with CryptoKitties is that once a core concept is proven, community and independent uh, creators can build on top of it, upwards and outwards. They can tap into that audience. They can tap into that established work. They don't have to start from square zero. They can build on top of your shoulders. And, and this grows the entire ecosystem as a whole. Uh, while it isn't exactly true on the platform scale yet, I will admit, I can confirm that it is holding up on the product scale. Within one month, we saw a dozen projects built on top of CryptoKitties that only enhanced the experience and provided more use cases. Within six months, there were six times as many. Uh, that's really cool. And, and what this comes down to is, while there are substantial barriers to reaching this critical mass, once a project reaches that scale, it can unlock exponential and symbiotic growth uh, that enhances the product's ecosystem. And, and smaller teams can then do these experimental or complementary or very niche products that, that don't necessarily deserve that core development overhead. That is very challenging. Certainly, there are potential rewards for that core development that come with that barrier to entry, but there are far greater risks. It's really not easy. It's also worth mentioning, if you do have this core concept, if you are a leader in this space, you will need to continually innovate or provide value to maintain your role as that central figure. Otherwise, your competitors or your community will simply outpace you. That is the catch-22 of transparent development. Everything you've done is public. All you've really got as defensibility is your creativity. Um, speaking of, though, and, and everything I've been talking about up to this point, is the central issue of scalability. And I'm sorry I've only got three minutes left. I had a really good solution for scalability that I was going to share with you all. Uh, I don't. But <laughs> it does underline the desperate need for widespread adoption. Blockchain holds immense potential. It might be the biggest technological revolution since the internet. But if it isn't used, it isn't useful. 
And if it's not useful, it, it's nothing more than a buzzword. So next to no one is letting you actually experience why blockchain matters. The technical challenge of scalability is, is not going away tomorrow. But there are still a lot of things we can do to push this technology forward. There are a lot of other ways to let people experience the blockchain without having a billion people on the same blockchain. Uh, so experiment and innovate and, and most of all, deliver. Because once you deliver on your promises, you are showing that this technology actually has promise. Um, it, it's not consumer friendly right now, at least not yet. It's, it's an alphanumeric code to access your wallet, which is like using an IP address to access a website. There are no regulations leading to scams and, and market manipulation. ICOs are incredibly powerful, but, but people have abused them. And, and to a lot of outsiders, that makes it look like the underlying technology is to blame in a lot of ways. Um, and, and the combination of excitement and of ignorance and how the technology works is, is leading to a lot of untenable expectations and some pretty deep misunderstandings. Right now, it is slow. It is cumbersome. And it does have problems. So yes, the blockchain is not consumer friendly yet. But that was true about Fire for a time. And, and like any tool, we need to be aware of blockchain's problems if we are ever going to overcome them and ultimately realize its potential. We need more people to actually experience why it matters, what are the benefits of blockchain, if we want this to be anything more than a buzzword. Otherwise, we're just making a lot of smoke with nothing to show for it. Thank you.